Do we have more blankets, Mum? Arthur Soufflet spends his free time differently than most 13-year-olds. He brings food and clothing to people experiencing homelessness. Here you find shampoo and a warm meal. I will never forget you. <laughs> to finance this, Arthur paints and sells his artwork in Cambrai, in the north of France. The COVID-19 pandemic halted Arthur's project, but only temporarily. Now he's picking up where he left off. Arthur is here to help. I use black as a base. Then I add other colors to offer a nice contrast. White and turquoise, for example. When I paint, I'm always very calm and relaxed. Arthur is rarely alone in his studio. Could you hand me a rag, Solène? His sister Solène and his brother Arsène keep him company. So how did Arthur come up with the idea? I was still very little and we were on holiday. <laughs> Arsène remembers he was still in his mother's belly when the family was vacationing in Saint-Tropez. Saint-Tropez or Saint-Malo? Or perhaps it was Saint-Malo. As Arsène tells it, that was the first time that Arthur saw a person living on the street. I wanted to help, and I was looking for a way to finance it. I saw a couple of artists on the boardwalk and I thought, why not? I made my first drawings in the sand with some pebbles and I made enough money to buy something for the homeless. Later, I started doing real drawings. At first, I only sold them to my family members. Then one day, we held our first exhibition. That's when the adventure really began. I don't want anyone to be poor anymore, not just the homeless, but all those who need help. Kids, breakfast! Arthur's mother practices alternative medicine. His father is a firefighter. Together, they are a middle-class family living in the north of France. Hello, little ones. What's on the agenda? David's picking up our tour at 2 o'clock. David. The idea was Arthur's, but the whole family takes part in the adventure. His brother and sister assist with the paintings, and his parents take him to exhibitions and to distribute the proceeds. The family has experienced emotional moments together. Arthur and his mother recall a man named Claudio. Claudio was a wonderful guy. He was homeless. Arthur loved spending time with him. We visited him a lot. He was a true artist. He was brave and kept on drawing, pursuing his passion. I was very moved. Arthur wanted the two of them to paint something together. We were very sad when we learned of his death. It was a difficult moment. Death is a part of life. Indeed it is. Arsène wonders what Claudio died of and his mother explains it was a disease. A family friend arrives to pick up Arthur and his sister. They pack the paintings into the car and head off to Arthur's first exhibition in two years. The exhibition takes place in an artist-run gallery. Arthur sells his paintings for 20 to 30 euros apiece, and he sells as many as two dozen per exhibition. Occasionally, buyers voluntarily pay more. We'll take these down and hang yours here, OK? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. What's the most someone's paid for one of Arthur's paintings? Around 150 euros for several paintings or one big one. Sometimes people tell me, all oh, this is too much for you, you ought to quit. 
How does Artur reply? I pretend to hear them out, but there's no question in my mind that I'll keep going. <laughs> Despite a two-year hiatus, Arthur still has fans, like the eight-year-old Victor. Annie Claude is an artist who makes sculptures. And here's her grandson. What's your name? He wanted to meet you. He was anxious to get here. He said, hurry or else Arthur will have left. <laughs> What he's doing is great. I like his paintings. Does Victor hope to follow in his footsteps? I prefer making sculptures. He always makes sculptures with me. He says he might be able to contribute a little as well. Or a lot. <laughs> Over the years, Arthur has built up a loyal fan base that follows his activities. Nikki Villemotte and her husband have known him for four years now. Hello, Arthur. I like that one a lot. How did you paint it? With a fan brush. I like his paintings. They're so colourful. Not all of them, but most. That puts a little joy in life. And the best part is we know why he's doing it. We've already got three of his paintings. Today I'm buying one for my sister-in-law. She saw his work at my place and wanted one herself. Here's the money. It's a great pleasure for us. Before the pandemic began, Arthur's project had been gaining momentum. It had almost become routine. We were visiting homeless people regularly and had started an association. We were getting hundreds of checks and letters from people all over France and around the world. It was fantastic. We even had backers for a house we wanted to buy for the homeless. We were planning to build an entire village for them in the long run. The family has collected 10,000 euros so far, but the projects had to be shelved. Now that's set to change. Are we driving to Douai? Yes. First, they have to buy food at the supermarket. They'll hand out some of it in the area. He plays great. Arsène agrees. C'est ça. Many thanks. You play very well. Have the boys met the musician before? We've seen him here many times. And do they give him something every time? I always give him a little money at least. You're giving him love just by watching him. That alone does him good. He keeps on going because someone is looking. They set out for Douai, a town roughly 30 kilometers north of Cambrai in northern France. 19% of its population live below the poverty line. That's a third more than France's national average. In Douai, they're meeting with Coralie Dubuisson, a social worker and friend. She's waiting for them with Ludovic Lefebvre, a homeless man who knows Arthur. Hello. The 50-year-old is struggling with alcoholism. Are you doing all right? He's been homeless for four years now. Not doing well. Of course you're not doing well. My friend just died. Were you too close? We have to let the authorities know, so they can help you. 
I don't think they'll bother about it. Do you like it? Yes. yes. It's a nice color. They give him food and clothing and a stuffed animal for good luck. Everyone needs something to cuddle. And some protection, Arsène points out. <laughs> I will never forget you. <laughs> Ludovic takes us to see where he sleeps in a car full of blankets. Artur, take a seat in my palace. Ludovic has been sleeping here for three months. You're the king of all this. No, no I'm not the king of anything. Of your life. You. Live your life to the fullest. How does it make Ludovic feel to have Arthur next to him? It means a lot. It warms my heart. I'm really doing badly. I believe you'll find a way. Me too. Come, let's get up. You've taught me a lot. Same here. Arthur carries on doing his part to help homeless people get on their feet again and to bring his dream of eliminating poverty a few steps closer. <laughs>